Hey guys, today we are going to talk about vaccines and why I'm still standing where I've stood always. So I want to start this video, one, by showing you this, okay? So one of the things that as I went through my life, I started out as pro-vaccine, right? I think we all do. We all just sort of say, okay, well, everybody gets these things. Most people are fine. Then it's fine. But I started kind of questioning that whenever I started seeing people report things that happened to them after taking vaccines. And whenever people started telling me that there is like a vaccine court that you can go to to get monetary compensation for the harm that vaccines do. And I finally found it right here. Okay, this is the United States Court of Federal Claims. This is the Vaccine Claims slash Office of Special Masters. And this is the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program. It comprises part two of the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act of 1986. I think that's 86, yeah. All right, the Vaccine Act became effective October 1st, 1988, and establishes the vaccine program as a no-fault compensation program whereby petitions for monetary compensation may be brought by or on behalf of persons allegedly suffering injury or death as a result from the administration of certain compulsory childhood vaccines. Congress intended that the vaccine program provide individuals a swift, flexible, and less adversarial alternative to the often costly and lengthy civil arena of traditional tort litigation. So since the 80s, we've recognized that vaccines hurt us. They hurt us enough that we would need some kind of monetary <clears throat> compensation. So I came across, let's see if I can do this correctly. I came across this um, video that we're going to watch real quick. And this guy had all kinds of problems. So I'm just going to play and let you listen. First people in the country to be approved for compensation. But others are still waiting. CTV's Michelle Bernardo has a story. With special braces for his legs. I have no muscle or ner nerve movement, movement or activity below my knees at this point. Ross Whiteman is walking again, though with difficulty. And his hands, suffering nerve damage, have become stronger. Man. Both hands, they're, um, as you can see, they're, they're curled in, um, and I don't have a lot of wrist strength. Um, so that makes obviously doing pretty much everything a challenge. The former pilot and realtor developed a rare neurological disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome after receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine in April of 2021. Recent BC CDC data indicates just 10 people in the province have ever been hospitalized with GBS after a COVID vaccine. But I had full facial paralysis. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't smile. I couldn't show my teeth or, or anything like that. No, I'm just kind of focusing on moving my feet. For Whiteman, who was also initially paralyzed from the waist down, physiotherapy became a full-time job as he learned to move again. My world got flipped upside down. He recently received a letter from the Federal Vaccine Injury Support Program validating his vaccine injury and saying he had been approved for compensation, one of only a handful in the country. Okay, so this is uh, something that doesn't just happen here. It's recognized also in Canada and probably other places too. So I can't, you know, I didn't find anything about it being in other places. But I mean, if you just think about this... Oh, I should have done that. Oh no. Okay. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so if you think about this, then this means we recognize on some level that vaccines are harmful. Does that mean you shouldn't take it? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. See, here's the thing. I'm all about your choice. You should make the decision to take these vaccines with full knowledge of what they can do. And for the past, I don't know, eight to 10 years, the rhetoric around vaccines is that they are 100% safe. They're completely safe. You can give them to your kids. You can give them to this, that, or the other. And people were looking down on people who just decided, okay, I don't want to give the, my kids these vaccines. I'd rather do like a chicken pox party or whatever. 
And I think that that chicken pox party is valid the same way that vaccines are valid. All right. If you give your kids chicken pox, they can die from that. Will they? I don't know. Most likely not, right? If you give your kid a vaccine, it's the same thing. Like it's the same, to me, it's the same risk. Your kid can die from the vaccine or lose their ability to walk or have nerve damage or have brain damage or there's lots of other things that could happen to them that maybe the disease wouldn't do. So this level of choice really needs to be ours, not the governments, not the schools, not, you know, other people just should not get to decide what I do as far as my healthcare. Now, you know what I mean? I don't think businesses should mandate vaccinations. I don't like it that business, some businesses mandate the flu vaccine. It, it doesn't help people. I personally don't get vaccinated. I did when I was a kid, um, but I don't anymore. I, I would rather have the disease. I've gotten all kinds of different flu strains. And now anytime I go out or whatever, I don't, I'm not scared of it. I, I know that I've had most likely this strain of flu before and my body knows how to fight it off. The one, the last one that I had that was new and that, you know, I hadn't had before, even then I didn't worry about it too much because it only took me one more day to get over. And yes, it did hurt because I have asthma. So anything that's respiratory, one, I usually get it. And two, it's usually harder on me than, you know, it's harder on asthmatics than it is on other people. So, um, where's I going with that? Oh, <clears throat> so that being the case, um, uh, it was a little bit harder, but I still got through it the same way. I went out after three days, I went outside. I sat in the sun for at least five to 10 minutes. I kept up my fluids. You know what I'm saying? Uh, about the third day I was craving protein. So that to me is my signal that I'm getting a lot better. The fourth day was just trying to recover from using all of the energy to try and get rid of this thing. But I did do that naturally with my own immune system. And I always argue that my immune system now is stronger because of that. I mean, since then, when the flu goes around, I don't even get it anymore. So I think this debate all the time is always about, you know, keeping people safe or whatever. Uh, that's what I've heard. I've heard keeping people safe, your quality of life, etc. We have now seen lots and lots of evidence that vaccines do not guarantee you a good quality of life. And disease do doesn't guarantee you that either. Okay, your quality of life has to come from, I made my decision and this is the decision I'm going to live with. I think that is the only way to guarantee a good quality of life. I think when other people start making the decision for you, when other people start trying to culturally bully you into doing something like this, then that's just, that's just not good. I think that's where it starts getting dangerous because then we start doing, we, we start doing what we did with the COVID vaccine and speeding things up so it gets out and gets out quickly instead of trusting that our immune systems, which have, you know, depending on how you look at it, which have uh, been with us for millions of years and been developed well enough to get us to this stage. Or if you're more of a godly person like me, then I just believe that he made the immune system to battle things like this. Then you're going to be fine. I just, I hate the rhetoric around vet, around healthcare. Healthcare should be, you sit down with as much information as you can, as you can get and make your decision. And choosing to not do something is as just as much a valid decision as choosing to do everything. Okay. And I think that's the way we should look at it. I don't think we should try and make people do one thing or the other. I think that's probably 
where it comes down to for me. So anyways, guys, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. The vaccines are hurting people. Vaccines do hurt people. They have apparently since the 80s at least. Well, probably before that because that's usually when people have their outcry and the government does something about it. That's about 10, 20 years after anything's really going on. So you can probably guarantee about the 60s when the vaccines changed again that... um, <clears throat> That's when I started really hurting people. So, what do you think? I know I've been rambling on this. I'm sorry. I keep trying to make it a shorter video, but <laughs> this is about the second or third time I've done this, so and it always ends up rambling. So, what do you think, guys? What do you think? Uh, remember to pray and read your Bible, and I will see you in the next one, okay? Thank you so much for joining me, my fellow Americans. Bye!